top two, two on for Carlos Delgado. He lines that pitch to right field. Shannon Stewart says, thanks, I think I'll be scoring. Delgado in with a double. Jays go up 4-1 on RBI number 116 for Delgado. Seventh inning, Dave Stewart would come in to talk to John Frascatore about a bases loaded situation and pitch selection. And he listens. He gets Luis Alisea to ground out harmlessly, but in the Blue Jays dugout after the inning, Stewart had to be held back from getting to Frascatore. He was an intense pitcher, and he's still an, an intense kind of guy. Eighth inning is where we go next. Rafael Palmero. Pop and foul territory. Tony Batista on the run with the catch and with an assist from his friends in the dugout. After the game, Stewart confirmed he was yelling at Frascatore. He said, quote, John can never, never have my in top three, four zip Yanks. Mark Mulder facing Jose Canseco deep to center. Solo shot number 443 of his career, 12th of the year. Five zip bombers. Two batters later, Jorge Posada with a runner on. Doubles to the gap in right center. Tino Martinez is really fast and he's going to make his way home. Six zip Yanks. Mulder gave up 10 hits, six runs, and he was bumming. El Duque, meantime, was cruising. Bye-bye, Jason Giambi. How about Mike Stanley? Mm, no. Miguel Tejada, perhaps? Uh, maybe not. 11 Ks for El Duque. Later, El Duque facing Eric Chavez. That's a shot to left field. It's a deep shot to left. Deep but playable. Canseco in left field for the first time since July 99 with the easy catch. And you can make it two straight in the win column for El Duque as the Bombers win. Bernie Williams, who missed the previous seven games with a strained right rib cage, singled in the first. Randy Wolf hoping to reverse that trend. Bill Miller, Barry Bonds, Ellis Burks. Oh, yeah, all of y'all can go take a seat. Wolfpack loves that. Yes, indeed. Bottom three, no score. Two on for Pat Burrell. Facing Kirk Reeder. That's down the left field line. Abreu and Doug Glanville say thanks. We think we'll be scoring. 21st double for Burrell. Two zip Phillies. Next, it's Scott Rowland. That's the right. That should be an out, but it's not. Burks loses it in the sun. Abreu and Glanville score. That highlight brought to you by Oakley. Get a pair, and things like that will not happen. Phillies beat the Giants for the first time in 10 tries, dating back to June 99. Rolling two for four, and he... Come on out of there, John Franco. Top four, no score. Jay Bell and Jay Payton talking with his heater. Run on me? I don't think so. Oh, Mike Piazza taking one for the team. Mike Piazza, we do believe, still still dating a playmate of the year, so he's got someone to comfort him later on. Bobby J. Jones, though, fired up about the effort. Now in the six, still no score. Piazza trying to start the offense. 34 inches and 33 ounces of pure terror right there off of Brian Anderson. 33rd of the year for Mike Piazza. one nothing Mets. Back to defense in the seventh club of Trammell with the shallow fly to right. Now Danny Bautista hit the ground. Nice. More D-backs, D in the eighth. Ray Colburn knocking the guard of Alfonso Grano right to Jay Bell. And Bell fires back for the 3-4-3. Top ten now. Bell on second for Luis Gonzalez against Rick White. Gonzalez and Peyton. Won't get to that one. Bell will score easily, and that'll do her. He box going to win this thing 5-1, and the win helps Zona crawl back within two and a half of the Giants. Alex Rodriguez is all of the above for the Seattle Mariners. Bottom of the fifth. Hems already leading four to nothing, and that is everything. His 32nd homer of the season, the five nothing M's, came off of Rocky Biddle. This is not Rocky. This is Charles Johnson with a slapper to right. Al Martin makes the catch, laying out, giving up the body. Top of the seventh, socks down, 7 5, and blown away. Frank Thomas struck out by Jose Paniagua, and Seattle goes on to win 11 5 after being held to a mere four singles in the opener of this tribe, and that apparently is the Rally Monkey. If you already knew that, you might want to reevaluate. Top of the fourth, runner on first, Scott Schoenweiss, pitching to Roberto Alomar. Schoenweiss uh, throws it into center field. Omar Vizquel, the third, first and third, nobody out. Now Manny Ramirez hits a sack fly. That makes it one nothing. Then it's David Segui. Drive to left center, and this one all the way to the wall. Alomar trying to score. Will he get in there and, yeah, throw a bit offline. Segui, 74th RBI, Indians up 2-0. Bottom of the sixth, Indians up 4-1, bases loaded there, your visual proof. 
two outs. Paul Shuey gets Ron Gant. Gant 0 for 2. He's down to a buck 96 since coming to Anaheim. Charlie Manuel's enthused. And, and the rally monkey says, I got a tea time, fellas. Move it along. Tribe wins it for the sixth time in its last eight games. 9 to 5 is the final. Cleveland pounding out 12 hits with each. Marlins, top one, Jesus Sanchez facing Barry Larkin, and Larkin knows what to do with a bat, yeah, especially when you throw a ball at him. His 11th of the year, Reds up 1-0, and then, folks, there was rain, and we mean rain. Where's the Morton girl with the salt and the umbrella? Two-hour, 40-minute delay. Back to the action, Chris Dines with two on. That's going to make its way up the middle to score Barry Larkin. Preston Wilson with the throw, which goes into the dugout. Ochoa will come on in to score. Reds go on to win. By a final count of three to two. The rain delay lasted two hours, 40 minutes. The game lasted three minutes less than that. Pete Harnish improves to six and two with a 2.88 ERA in 11 starts. Both bottom four, no score. Jose Lima to Jose Vidro. Oh man, he wants it back, but he gets it back in the worst possible way. 21st of the year for Vidro. Expos up one zip. Top nine is where we go next. 5 1 Expos, bases loaded, one out. Tony Eusebio drives that one down the third base line. Jeff Bagwell, Moises Alou, and Chris Truby will all score. I'm starting to sound like BK. 22 game hitting streak for Eusebio. Same inning, one on, two out. Steve Klein to Mitch Molusky. Vlad Guerrero. No thanks for the lace. Leather will do just fine. 5-4. The Expos get the victory. A nine-hit attack. Dave Will Clark in the cards taking on no the score. guys from Kevin Atlanta. Kevin. Top of the second. No score. Clark takes Kevin Millwood Five deep. Five the right it's off the foul line. ball. Uh, does that count? Off the pole there? Absolutely. Yeah, I guess it does. That's when coming up with Kevin Millwood, his sixth. Guess what? It's Clark again. Yes, he loves Millwood. Another solo shot. The Cardinals up. Five zip now. Clark was swinging that amazing stick. Bottom of five. Still five nothing. One on two outs. Garrett Stevenson gets Andrew Jones swinging. Stevenson six and two thirds innings. Gives up seven hits with two strikeouts. Bottom of nine. Cards lead at six three. One on two outs. Chipper Jones with the hard line. And look at that grab right there by Dave Varis. The great snag to end the game. The Card before the game, he had missed three games with a strained hammy. Top of the first, Brian Daubach taking Brian Meadows deep. 2 0 Bo Sox, number 19 for Daubach. 200th homer given up by KC this year, most in the majors. Later in the first, Scott Hatterberg with two on. Nomar scores, Troy O'Leary scores 4 0 Red Sox. Boston had six hits, scored four runs in the first. Bottom of the fifth, Orlando Rojo had a shutout going, but no longer. Johnny Damon, a two run shot. Cuts the lead in half. Damon's 13th homer of the season. After the inning, Arojo, not pleased, expresses his anger with a kick to the water cooler. Not a good idea. After he retired the first batter in the sixth, he would have to leave with a right ankle contusion, not expected to miss any starts. Later in the inning, his relief pitcher, Paulino Pichardo, gives up the single to Greg Zahn. Joe Randis scores. Royals now trail 4-3. Zahn was 2-4. for four. But the Red Sox would not be denied. Jason Varitek with the base hit. That scores Nomar. That's in the eighth. It's 5-3 Boston. One of two hits for Varitek. And the Bo Sox remain a half game in front of the Tribe in that wild card race. They take it 5-3. Sixth loss in seven games. It lasted just one day. Detroit and Minnesota top three scoreless, no moreless. Thank you. May I have another? One out, one on, and another one out for Damian Easley. Martinus one for 16 slump no longer. Off of Eric Milton, the last major leaguer to toss a no-hitter. Two nothing Tigers, and the wheels come off defensively. Corey Koski. Koski, one of two errors he had in the day, and here comes the other. Next batter, Wendell McGee, runners on the corners, and Koski to throw to second just a bit high. Bobby Higginson will score. Twins with three shots at a double play in the inning, and they didn't turn one. So Steve Sparks wins his fifth straight decision, keeping the Twins off balance till the eighth behind a knuckler. That sputtered along and speeds as slow as 56 miles per hour. Detroit back up to 500 for just the second time. In search of 400. Top of the second, 4 1 Rockies. Runner on second. Helton rips that Silva pitch to left. Juan Pierre running hard, and I'm not kidding. He slides around. Jason Kendall's tag. 5 1 Rocks. Helton one for two at that point. Then it's Helton again. He bounces that one high and up and over the wall. Ground roll double. Runner would stay at third and would later score. Helton two for four. Hit number 183 on the season. Bottom six, bases loaded, and that's the end of that threat. Napy Perez says thanks. Please drive home safely. 11 for the Rocks get the victory. One.
Extra value for your ticket paying dollar. We're in the bottom of the 10th. Brewers down 5 4 runners on second and third for James Mouton off of Trevor Hoffman. And that'll do her. Two runs score. Or someone once said, one run will score. Two runs will score. And the Padres fall. 6 5 Brew Crew. Trevor Hoffman had whiffed the first two before he faced Mouton's heroics, which years. The first televised baseball game was back in 1939, and it looked somewhat like that. Just two cameras used, Tom Goodwin grounding out. Back to Tappany, a little flip to first, and that's how we start here at Wrigley Field. We apologize as we've lost our feed from Wrigley Field. Of course, they had a lot of problems when they first began televising the game, but they were improving by 1948. Look at those graphics. <laughs> that is high-tech, computer-age stuff. That was around 1948, and they didn't bother with the hand coming in to the shot. The color commentator joined the booth in 57. Tim McCarver explains his value. The second, it's low and away, two and two. Baseball players, on the other hand, were very concerned with that center field shot because it was thought that teams could steal the signs from the catchers. Ah, uh, the analyst, always an important member of the sports telecast. In 61, full screen scoreboards came in, and also the first replay was used. In Saturday's game, Alex Cora with the fly to left, Rondell White there to make the catch. Looked pretty good the first time, so why not the second time? Because this is what replay was looking like back in 61. Then, eight years later, and now it was commercial time for the play-by-play -play announcer. Wrigleyville shaving cream. A shaving cream that glides on ever so soft. A shaving cream that digs down deep into your pores. It pulls the whiskers up and it says, hello there. The sincerity is just dripping from the lips of Joe Buck. Also in 69, color added to your presentation as well as the, the slow-mo replay. Damon Buford grounding out. Adrian Beltray turning the nice, nice play. The split screen introduced in 74 so we could all see just how slow Eric Caros runs. Bad throw. He would have had him in six months' time. And then in 85, we went high in the sky and brought in the blimps to cover the game, to providing, providing everybody with those aerial views. And in 96, the Fox Box introduced to help viewers flicking through the channels with the remote to let them know what was going on in the game when they stumbled upon it. In 96, also the catcher cam, the view from behind the plate. Todd Hundley shows us the view when he throws the mask off to try to throw out Rondell White. By the way, White did suffer a dislocated shoulder on that steal, and he's out indefinitely. The year 2000, bottom of the seventh, game tied at four, and the year 2000 means obnoxious sportscasters can say, for Ricky Gutierrez. Greg Olson speechless. Cubs win it, 6-4. And that is your history lesson for the day, ladies and gentlemen.